Okay, everyone, how are we doing today? I hope we're doing good. I hope we're doing great. We give God glory, honor, and praise for what He has done and what He's about to do in our lives. So, guys, um, today we have a topic that it's kind of heavy <laughs> because it's something that people don't like to talk about, but the Holy Spirit wants us to talk about it today. So, we're going to talk about it. And then, um, just give me a moment, please. Let me um, share this video to our other group. And then we'll go into today's topic, okay? How have you guys been, though? I hope you guys have been doing really good. Your week has been coming on great. And give God glory, honor, and praise for what he has done and what he's about to do. There is none like our God. You all know that, right? God is good. God is awesome. God is great. So, but before we go into today's business, let's quickly pray. Um, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise, honor, and glory for who you are, shine of days. There is none like you, our dear God. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. We thank you for who you are, Father. Lord, we have gathered here once again to do your business. Not my business or the business of anybody or anything, but your business, dear God. And we ask for your mercy, Father. Have mercy upon me, O God. In whichever way I've gotten it wrong with you, Father, let your mercy find me. Let your mercy speak for me this hour. Let your mercy find your people. Let your mercy speak for us, O God. Have mercy upon us, Father. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you. Come take prayer in us. Give me the boldness to speak the truth and convey the hearts of God's people. I rely on you solely, sweet, gentle Spirit of God. I can't do this in my power. Have your way. Use me as you please. Search me true and true. If you find any iniquity in me, O oh God, let your mercy speak for me this hour. Have your way. king there is none like you our father to with me as you please oh god in yeshua's name we have prayed amen amen and amen and amen all right guys so today i'm not gonna be here for long <laughs> But let the Spirit of God lead, you know, if he wants us to be here for a longer time, that's all well and good. So today we're going to be talking about something that is really sensitive and something that people don't like to talk about, you know, because it's a, it's a private thing. It's a private thing between a husband and a wife, right? Nobody needs to know. But this um question came up and i was asking the lord like god because i couldn't really answer the question which is is anal sex or oral sex um okay in a godly marriage right i couldn't really say because i didn't want to answer from my flesh you know most often as followers of christ we tend to to answer um, questions from our flesh and I've told us over time that you know on this work with God you, you as a follower of Christ you're more spiritual than than kind of yes even though you're human right so we're supposed to be more in our more in the spirit than in our flesh but it's really hard because the flesh wants what the flesh wants and so every day the flesh is battling you know, and that's, that's a war that we, we, we have to fight every day of our life to bring our flesh into subjection. So most often when we talk about some sensitive things about God, we, 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 we come based on our flesh, you know, and when we give, when we, when we come based on our flesh or we'll give the answer based on our flesh, most often it's the wrong thing that we talk about, right? 
So I couldn't really answer. For me, I felt like it was a personal preference, right? If you want to do anal sex or if you want to do oral sex with your partner. But it was something that has bothered me for a while and I, I just couldn't really, you know, I, I didn't really know if, if it was right. You know what I mean? When something keeps bothering you and you're saying, God, for, is this really right? Like, is it personal preference or what? And so I, I was speaking to the Holy Spirit about the situation because I, I couldn't really give a straight answer because I didn't know what to say. And I said, God, this is a question that a lot of followers of Christ that are married are asking. But, you know, people can come out and ask openly because it's, 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 um, it's a private thing. Some people are ashamed, you know, some people think that they might look at them some kind of way and all that kind of stuff. So I was asking the Holy Spirit, I said, I, I would really like to know because there is nowhere in the Bible where it was stated that, you know, anal sex or oral sex is against God. So, um, I just kept asking the Holy Spirit and this is the answer that I got. And that's the beauty of the Holy Spirit. You know, when you're working with, when you're working with God and you have the Holy Spirit as your teacher and your guy, when, when you ask, he answers. And for me, the Holy Spirit has always answered most of my questions with everyday life situation, right? So if, if he wants to tell me about something, he, he, he gives me an illustration with everyday life situation for me to get it better. And so the Holy Spirit deals with us all according to the way that we, we can grasp it, the way that we can understand it, right? That's the beauty of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't just teach you the same way that he's teaching Mr. B or Mr. C. He teaches you exactly the way that you can grasp it. So the way that it's going to teach me this particular thing is going to be different from the way that it's going to teach somebody else because the way that I will catch it will be different from the way somebody else will, you know? And so the, so as I was asking the Spirit, and the Spirit of God, Lord said this to me. And it kind of made sense. He said, look at you as, as a person, right? He said, every part of your body that God, as a person that God has created, he said, every part of your body has a function. And he told me, he said, you have eyes to see and you have nose to smell. You have mouth to talk and eat and you have ears to hear. You have your hands and your legs and you know, all the other organs that you have inside and all that stuff. And the only thing maybe to understand that every part of your body has a function. That is the reason why God created it. For instance, God has given us the eyes so we can see. We cannot breathe with our eyes, neither can we see with our nose, right? The nose has its, its role, its role, right? Yes. Just as the eyes and just as the ears and your teeth and your hands and your tongue, they all have their specific role that God created them for, right? So the Holy Spirit was telling me that, okay, so look at yourself. And see every part of your body. Right? Is every part of your body not assigned to do a particular thing? He said, God does not make mistakes. God is a perfect God. And what I'm going to say today, some people might not like it. Some people might. But that's why it's good for you to go into prayer and seek the Spirit of God by, for yourself. So that you will get your own answer. But this is the answer that I got right? And so the Holy Spirit was telling me, he said that every part, God does not make a mistake. Everything that God has, everything that God has created is good. But the enemy's, the enemy's agenda is to make everything that God has created as bad, is to disrupt the things that God has created, is to disrupt the flow of things that God has created. Like I tell us, our souls are the only things that we, our souls are the only thing that we have that our souls are, our soul rather is the only thing that we have that is valuable. It is valuable to God 
and is also valuable to the enemy. For that, for the enemy, our soul is so he can destroy it. But God, our soul is so he can preserve it, right? And the enemy's agenda is to make sure that everything that God has created does not go the way that it's supposed to go. And so the Holy Spirit was trying to make me understand. He said that is what this new age Christianity is about. That this new age Christianity that a lot of people practice, it is the acceptable way of devil worship. <laughs> this is deep and it's only for those that are really, really in the spirit. Is 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 the devil is a master of deceit. Is a master of deceit, you know. So everything that is he does is to deceive the children of God, deceive them into disobedience, into hell. That's his agenda. He doesn't have any other agenda. No matter what the enemy gives to you, you can never get anything out of it because if he gives you one dollar, he's gonna take ten dollars from you. That's the enemy, and everything that he gives to you is for destruction. And so the Holy Spirit was trying to make me understand why I'm saying this is because of the answer that the Spirit of the Lord gave me. And he said to me, he said, everything that God has created, every part of your body, rather, that God has created as a function, it is for X, this is what his duty is, right? You cannot use the duty, you cannot use the duty of the high as the, the duty of the nose. Meaning that if, you're, if you use your nose to breathe, you cannot use your eyes to breathe. You can only use your nose to breathe. You cannot use your nose to see. You can only use your eyes to see, right? So it is when it comes to the um, the male and female um, reproductive organs, right? God has created sex, and that's what the Holy Spirit made me to understand. God has created sex for reproduction and to pleasure a husband and a wife. And God created the, 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 the woman's private part, which is the vagina, to produce a, a, a child and also for pleasure. And then God has created the man's private part, with it, which is his um, manhood, you know, to, to produce a child as well and for pleasure. Because it is from the man's manhood that a sperm transfers into the, the, the woman. The woman's, you know, private part. So the Holy Spirit was trying to make me understand. He said, "If the 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 anus of any everybody is to every human is to bring out waste, right? God has created every part for what it is supposed to be used for, and God doesn't make mistakes." If your if anal sex was acceptable unto God, God didn't have to create the the the, the anus. God would have just let um Holy Spirit help me. God would have just allowed. God would have created the the private part of the woman rather. God would have just created the anus for everything, both um sexual and 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 exc excretion of waste, right? But God knew what he was doing. And so the Holy Spirit asked me, say, can you, can, like for instance, if you have a bowl that you use to excrete waste, like you used to pull or something, and they now give you that same bowl that you know that they use for pulling to eat food, are you going to use that same bowl to eat food as a human? Of course you cannot. So why do we then think that we can put um, our private parts in the place that God has originally created to excrete waste. If God knew, if God wanted us to use that part to to pleasure ourselves, God would not have used that. God would not have created that part for excretion of waste. Now that place excretes waste, meaning that bacteria. Like I'm not a doctor, but you know, doctors might be able to explain this better. Bacterias are there, right? And the kind of bacterias that are there are harmful bacterias. They're not like bacterias that are in the woman's private part that are that are good, you know? These bacterias in the anus, in the anal area, they are they are um bad bacterias, right? 
And you cannot put something in there, bring it out, and put it in a woman's uh, private part because it's going to cause infection. And God will not cause, God will not create anything to cause you healness. We may, we'll bring those things upon ourselves. And that's what the Holy Spirit was trying to make me understand. That the, the anus is for excretion of waste, not for you to pleasure yourself. Mm -mm. If it was, God would not have any reason to create the other part of the woman. Just like the animals, right? And the Holy Spirit brought this to me, said, just like the animals, you will see that the animals, they produce, they, they excrete waste and, and produce their young ones from the same place. God did not have to do a, 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 a demarcation like, okay, you must have this part for excretion and then have this part. No, he made it in a way that they can excrete waste and pleasure themselves from one, um, from one place. But as humans, God took his time to demarcate these places. So we we'll understand without anybody even telling you that this part of my body, this is what it is meant for. It is not meant for anything else. But as humans, you know, every day we try to, to create something new. We're always looking for new avenues, you know, for different stuff. And that is where we begin to worship the devil without us even knowing that we're worshiping the devil. <laughs> And that is why people cannot come out and speak about these kind of things. Why? Why? The truth is the truth. It's not hard to see. But today, they always find one scientific thing or the other to justify certain things that are against the laws of God. And that is why we were told that, see, on this work with God, you cannot bring the worldly thing into God's kingdom because the two of them will not marry. You know, they say that anything that is not in the Bible, if something is not in the Bible, it means that um, God did not say it or whatever that they say that, that whatever they say. But I'm trying to make us understand what the Holy Spirit made me to understand. He said, my daughter, you, you your mouth is created to eat and to talk. Holy Spirit, help me. So, when your husband puts his manhood in your mouth, your mouth is not. This is not going to sound nice. This is not going to be popular because, you know, it is, it is a way of life now. God help me. It is a way of life now, right? Your mouth is not supposed to be used for certain things. Just as your anus is not supposed to be used for pleasure. Your anus is created to... to, to to um, Holy Spirit, help me to remove waste. If God wanted you to use your anus for sex, God would have only created one hole for us to excrete, for us to pleasure ourselves, for us to give birth, just as He did with the animals. We're not animals, are we? But you see. Certain things are, are, are allowed or are, they, they are like taboos that cannot be spoken about. Why? Because people don't want to talk about them. Because they don't want to be judged or they don't want to sound like they are the only ones that are saying something else. But the truth is this. God never makes mistakes. And that was the answer that I got from the Spirit of God. So you two can pray and ask the Holy Spirit, you know, to reveal to you your own answer. But I'm just giving you my own answer. And it made sense to me because truly, when we look at ourselves, we'll see that every part of our body that God has created, well, it's for, it's for a particular purpose. Right? Why would God ask you, to go into a place that he knows that can cause you illness. Doctors will let you understand 
that anal sex is one is one of the fastest way for you to contact HIV. Anal sex is one of the fastest way for you to get infections. I'm not a doctor, like I said, but I'm just giving it to you from a layman's perspective based on what I got as my answer, right? That's why people, you know, have all sorts of illnesses. People even go as far as sleeping with animals. You know, there are certain things that you just know as a person that this is wrong. This is wrong. This is out of order. God is the orderly God. He has created everything the way that it should be. But when a human sees an animal and decides to go sleep with an animal, does it make sense? No. It doesn't make sense. These things are acts of devil worship. But we look at them from the perspective that, oh, it is a private um a private thing or it's an acceptable thing or you know everybody's doing it and all this kind of stuff but truly truly does this sit right with you as a child of God as a follower of Yeshua when you begin to go out of order then it means that something is wrong. Our God is orderly. Everything he does is in precision. And he never forgot anything. He remembered everything when he was creating man. He made sure that he gave us everything that we needed to survive and be humans. So what I'm saying basically to Ross is this. For me, when I prayed and I was asking the Lord about it, this was the answer that I got. Well, if you pray and you ask God about it and God, if God gives you another answer, all well and good. Basically, what is the Lord saying to you concerning the situation? If God says, my child, it is okay, then it is okay. Don't let anybody make you feel like it is not okay. But if God says, my child, that's not what I've created X, Y, Z for, and, you know, it is wrong, then that's what it is. But the God that I've come to know is not an author of confusion. So God would not tell you it is, God would not say to one that it is okay and say to another that it's not okay. Right? So that is how... The, 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 that's how man has introduced certain things to the children of God. And the children of God are practicing these things without knowing that these things that they are practicing are rituals. These things that they are practicing are devil worship. But in our eyes, it's normal. It's a way of life. That's what everybody is doing. It's acceptable in the world. You cannot bring the world into what you're doing with God. The two cannot mix. They're like water and oil. They, can, they would never mix. And that's why we're getting wrong as followers of Christ. We want to bring the world into God. And God is saying, but that's not who I am. I cannot see. We cannot force God to accept certain things. What God has said, he has said. You cannot make God say, oh God, but this should be acceptable because you like it or because it's a way of life. In fact, that's how you even get to know that something is against God. When you see that everybody or most people are walking that path, then look at it again. Because truth be told, the gospel is still not light. No matter how we, no matter how we sugarcoat it, no matter how we water down the gospel, the gospel is still not light. It's a message that still no, that that still would not be light. Just as when Jesus was here, people didn't want to hear what he had to say. People never liked the the gospel, and that's how it is still today. 
So when you see that you're, when you, so that's why when you're preaching something or you're talking about some, the gospel and people are liking what you're talking about, then you have to look at that thing that you're talking about again. People like to hear things that will tickle their ears. People like to hear things that will make them feel good because they know that they are living in sin. Now, they know that what I am doing is wrong. They need to walk away from it and repent. But no, they want people that will tell them that what you're doing is okay. And it is only those kind of people that will tell them the kind of things that they want to hear. Those are the kind of people that they want to follow. So if you tell them that no, what you're doing is wrong, then it means that you're not woke. So now, you know, even ministers of God, because they want to appear woke, or they want to be like they know what they are doing, you know, they, they, they begin to water down the gospel and begin to say all sorts of things just to make the people that they, are, they, they want to come to them to believe that they know what they're talking about. That is how man has, has misled the children of God. That is how man has brought the things of the world into the things of the spirit. And a lot of people are, are ignorant, and so they go, they, they do these things ignorantly without knowing. You know, I can, I can, as a, as a person, let, for example, right, as I grow up, I see that people have anal sex, I see that people do oral sex and all these kind of things, and, and, and you talk about it with other people, and they say, oh, it's good, it's nice, you enjoy it, you will do this, you will do that. So the next thing is wanting to try it because you believe that it's a way of life. Right? You believe that, oh, if people are doing it, that means it's okay. But like the Holy Spirit asked me, he said, can you eat with the same bowl that you used to poo? If you have a bowl that you, you used to excrete or you used to poo, if they bring that same bowl to you and put food in it, are you going to eat it? Will you be glad to eat from that same bowl? That was a deep question. And that is the same question I'm going to leave with the children of God. Like I said, it's good for you to have an intimate relationship with, with God so you will get to know God for yourself. Just as I kept praying, I was asking the Lord, is this thing right? And the Lord gave me the answer that he has given to me that I'm giving to you now. If you ask the Lord, God is going to let you know if it is something that is acceptable or not to him. Don't let anybody make you feel like, oh, their own perspective of, of this particular situation is the right way. Even me that is telling you, I'm telling you based on what I heard. Right? But, but that's a question I'm going to leave with us today. Can you eat food with the same bowl that you know that is used to, to excrete or that is used to, to pull or to, that they put um, feces in it? Can you eat with that same bowl knowingly? So the Holy Spirit made me to understand. He said every part of the human body that God created has a function. God gave everything their specific function. Just as you cannot, like I said earlier, you cannot use your nose to see. Just as you cannot use your eyes to breathe. So there are, that every part of our body has a function. And God made sure that he gave us the, the, the area for us to reproduce and, and, and to pleasure ourselves. That's what sex is about. For us to continue reproduction. And in the course, also pleasure the husband and the wife also pleasure themselves. And so sex is mainly for husband and wife. But in the world that we are today, everybody has sex. Whether you are married or single, it does not matter. Sex, having sex is a way of life. Having sex is a way of life. And so men will continue to look and bring up all sorts of things just to make the creation of God look like it is wrong. But our God is a perfect God and he does not make mistakes. So everything that he has created is good. But if you want to use certain, certain things that God has created for certain things, that's on you. But as children of God and as followers of Christ, for us to, we need to come to that place where we need to really seek the Holy Spirit. Where we need to really seek God about setting things before we indulge. As much as everybody um, 
everybody's doing it, as much as it's acceptable to the world, is it acceptable to God? What is God saying concerning that particular thing to you? Is God saying, my child, it's okay. See, our God is a principal God. And there is no way you will seek God concerning something that God will not give you the right answer. But as followers of Christ, we live our lives just as people in the world live their lives. That's why most powerful people cannot see the difference between us and those that are not, that are not followers of Christ. People can see. We're so religious that we're more religious than spiritual. We have become so religious that we have forgotten the essence why we're here on earth. We have forgotten the essence why we're called followers of Christ. We have forgotten all about that. We're now more focused on doing things the acceptable way. The acceptable way might not be the right way. That is something that we need to understand as children of God. It is acceptable does not mean that it is the right way. Right? It is acceptable does not mean it is the right way. And that's what the world is doing today. Now they are even teaching our children from tender age to choose to be either a girl or a boy. See, if God wanted you to be a girl, God will create you to be a girl. If God wanted me to be a man, God will create me to be a man. God will not create me as a woman and then I tell you that no, I'm a man. It means that I'm saying that God made a mistake, that God doesn't know what he's doing. Basically, that's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. That God made a mistake by making me a woman. I was supposed to be a man and he made me a woman. That's what we're saying. Oh my God. And now, children at tender ages are beginning to choose the sex that they want to be. Even though they were born a particular sex. And everybody, even us as followers of Christ, are short. We, we've kept our mouth shut about it because we don't want to be judged. Because we don't want people to look at us a certain type of way. But we know in our hearts of hearts that it is wrong. But because we don't want the world to see us in a particular way, we would not talk. And so this thing keeps going on. And tomorrow, say in another 10 years, Man will come up with something else. And as followers of Yeshua, we'll still keep quiet. Why are you afraid of being judged? Why can't we speak the truth even if we serve the God of truth? Oh my God. Why can't we speak the truth even if we serve the God of truth? We all know that God is true. We know that there is no lie in God. So how come... As followers of Yeshua, we keep quiet and we see all these things happening right in front of us. Even our own children are being roped into this thing and we can't say anything. That is to let us understand how weak we have become. That is to let us understand that on this walk with God, we're not just walking with God because we love God and want to be obedient to God. We're walking this walk because we want people to see us a certain type of way. Religious rules and regulation is what is killing the body of Christ. We're more religious than spiritual. Oh my God. And that is why we cannot see the move of God. Because anything that the world throws at, at us, we accept it. We can't stamp our feet on the floor and say, no, this is against the God that I serve. Or no, I, this is not okay with me. This is not how God has designed this. We can't say anything. Why? What are we afraid of? What are we afraid of? How long are we going to keep quiet? How long are we going to keep accepting everything that the world throws at us? Even though we know that it is wrong. Who then is going to speak if we're all afraid of talking? And then when it comes to irrelevant things, we're there to talk. If it comes to sowing seeds and paying tithes and all this nonsense that we care about, everybody wants to come and tell you the portion of the Bible where it is stated that you must pay tithes, you must pay offering, you must do this, you must do that. But when it comes to the relevant things, we're short. We don't care about that. You see how this new age 
age Christianity has automatically become the acceptable way of Satan worship. It has automatically become the acceptable way of devil worship. Because we have brought in all these religious things, rules and regulations, even from the pagan, uh, pagan festivities, everything we have brought into Christendom. And we are not even asking questions. We just accept it because everybody accepts it. We just accept it because that's the way of life. You've been given eyes to see. Why then are you walking like a blind person? Jesus Christ, when he left, he prayed for the Holy Spirit because he knew that we needed that. To lead us and guide us into all truth. But we don't even take advantage of the fact that God has sent his spirit down to, 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 to has sent his spirit on us so we can be led right. Sin has become a part of Christendom. It is now okay. Providing you're in church on Sunday and you're paying tithes and you're paying offering and you're doing it is okay. When are we going to stand up as followers of Christ and begin to do that which is right and begin to speak the truth? The truth should not say, if you have the truth in you, Christ is truth. If you have the truth in you, you shouldn't be afraid to speak the truth one day. One day you shouldn't be afraid to speak the truth. If you are afraid to speak the truth, it means that you don't have Christ in you. And that is what it means. Because you cannot be dealing with a God of truth and then there is no truth in you. How does that work? How does it work? How does it work? But we're busy fighting one another. Who is a good pastor? And who is not serving God? And who is not a good, a, 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 who is not a right prophet? Who is not giving right prophet? The things that we fight about are things that are not even important. The things that we should fight about, we're not even fighting about them. And gradually that seeps into the body of Christ. It is now a part of Christendom. Ask yourself, God, am I doing it right? Don't be afraid to stand alone. Because truth be told, if you have God, you're never alone. That's the truth. Don't let man lead you into hell. A lot of us have been blinded to, the fact, to, to a lot of facts that we're going to hell and we don't even know that that's where we're going. That's the truth. Devil worship is now the acceptable way of Christianity. And we're there fighting and a Christian. This one is fighting and a Muslim. That one is fighting. You're saying you don't know God. You that say that you as a Christian, do you even know God? Because if you truly know God, you will know that the God that you serve is a God that never makes mistakes. God never, God knows everything. He created everything. And tomorrow they will say, oh, well, well, uh, we came into this world as animals, homo sapiens, this and that, and all these things the scientists come up, come up with. But truth be told, have you sat back to think, how then did I come into this world to know all these things that I know? Who created that one animal that became human? How did that animal come into this world? Have you sat back to think about all these things? And if that's how human was, if that's how we were created as human, how come we don't keep evolving like that and evolving like that? How come we're able to produce children? <laughs> See, don't let man lead you astray. Don't. The time has come as Christians to begin to ask ourselves those very deep questions. We should stop doing things because everybody is doing it. Everybody is doing it doesn't make it right. We're supposed to stand apart. We're supposed to be different. How then are we different? How? How? 
So like I say to us every time, see, don't get to know God based on anybody's perspective. Don't know this God based on my own perspective because it might be wrong. Get to know God for yourself. Let God reveal himself to you the way that he wants to reveal himself to you. Don't let anybody deceive you. Please. The way that seems right might not be right. Everybody's walking this path. Does not mean that that is the right path. You have brains. You have everything that you need to sit back and ask yourself, God, is this this? Is this that? We run to everybody for answers. But the one person that has all of the answers, we don't run to. We don't care. The person you're running to give you, you're running to, to get the answer from. How are you sure that person even knows what the person is talking about? <laughs> Jesus. A lot of us go to seminary schools and all these schools that we go to. The people that are teaching you in that school, are they submitted to the Holy Spirit? The people that are teaching you in that school, are they submitted to God? Do they even know God? Or they're just telling you about this God based on the things that they have read. The things that people have written. These people that wrote all these things that they are teaching you about. Do you know what was influencing them when they were writing these things? Do you? See, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, and if you're submitted to the person of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and my sisters, Certain things will just not be right. You will not be able to do certain things. Today, everybody is a book writer. And anybody can wake up and start to write this and write that and write that. People are buying and reading. They're not even communicating with God to know, God, is this real? God, is this true? God, is this, this? Uh-uh. They just believe everything that they read, hook, line, and sinker. So even on television, they are giving us all these shows. People just look at it and be, see the devil is, is the devil, right? He shows us everything in plain sight, but we cannot see why because we are blind. He's the master of deceit. Deception is his name. So he will deceive you with the very thing that you believe in. He will deceive you with the very thing that you 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 you, you practice. Why? Because we have refused to allow the Spirit of God to lead us. See, if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, you will hardly go astray. If you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, you will not do things this way because everybody else is doing it that way. Never. See, this God that we call upon is way more than what we think that we know. You need to have an intimate relationship. See, it is that is the best decision that you can make for yourself as a human. To have, a, if you say you are a child of God or you are a follower of Yeshua, because I don't like to use the word Christian anymore. Because Christianity has brought a lot of reproach to God. Everybody, people wake up and do all sorts of things. They finch miracles. They do all sorts of things in the name of God. All sorts of things in the name of God. And people fall for these schemes and these scams because they don't have a relationship with God. If you have your own personal relationship with God, you'll be able to know what is right and what is wrong. Because that's what the Spirit of God is there to do for you. But we've abandoned the, the Spirit of God. We don't care about that. We're just looking for places where they will tell us things that will make us feel good. That will make us feel like, yes, you know, this is this. And see, my dear brothers and sisters, know God for yourself. As married couples, it is extremely important for the two of you to be in agreement at all times 
so you can seek the face of the Lord concerning certain things. Yes. Maybe before you knew God, you were doing X, Y, Z. But now that you are in Christ, you and your spouse should pray concerning it and say, God, is this something that you want us to do? Is this right? Don't do it because everybody else is doing it. Because unknown to you, you will start to worship the devil without you knowing. I'm telling you. A lot of us are into devil worship without us knowing it. But we think that we're worshiping God. <laughs> hey, hey, Jesus. A lot of us that say we're Christians or we're followers of Christ, we're into devil worship without us even knowing. See, anal sex. <laughs> if you're in occult, certain rituals that are done is anal sex. They will tell you that I've anal sex. Yes. Occultic people, they know that. I'm not here to judge anybody. Like I said, it's, if, if it's something that is good for you, or if it's something that your spirit says is right for you. Nobody is stopping you from doing it. But if you know that your spirit is against it, don't just jump into it because everybody else is doing it. A lot of us are so... I don't even know the word to use. See, the devil is real. Most of these things I will see on TV... They are only telling you that this is what is going on. They are only telling you that this is what is going on. Sorry, excuse me. They are only telling you that this is what is going on. It's left for you to believe or not. They are not just movies. They are not just plays. They are telling you. It's staring at you in plain sight. So... As married couples, as God, as people that are in a godly marriage, if your spouse, if your spouse wants anal sex or oral sex, and if it's not okay with you, ask your spouse so you guys can pray and seek the face of the Lord concerning. Be sure. That God is saying to you, my child, it's okay. Don't just jump into it because it is a way of life. Don't just jump into it because your spouse says he or she likes it. There are marriages that have broken up because of this particular situation. Marriages have ended because of this particular situation. And that is why we are made to understand that two shall become one. When you are one, it means that you are in sync. And so when something doesn't sit right with one, you take it to the head. We need to stop doing stuff as children of God. Because others are doing it. That is what has led a lot of us astray. We need to normalize seeking the face of God. Concerning certain things. Before we indulge. Seek God first. Before you indulge in certain things. Don't just indulge because everybody is doing it. Everybody doing it doesn't make it right. I don't know how to emphasize on that. But, you know, the essence of this group is to, is to help godly couple achieve what it is that God has called them to achieve. Is to help even those that are not godly couples to understand that with God there are certain standards. Everything doesn't just go with God. Mm-mm. -mm. There are rules and there are regulations. But you can only know these rules and regulations 
when you have a relationship with God. Not just any kind of relationship. An intimate relationship. Where you understand that obedience and submission to God is paramount. Everything don't just go. You cannot bring the world into the things of God. They will not mix. They are far apart. So these are things that people will not talk about. People will not talk about things like this because they don't want to be judged. They don't want people to see them some, some type of way. But if we don't talk about it, who then is going to talk about it? It's because people are not talking about it. That's why a lot of people keep falling into the, the, the trap of the enemy. That's why a lot of people keep falling into, you know, the, the trap of Satan. We need to stand up. We need to start to speak up as children of God. We need to start to speak the truth. It doesn't matter how anybody sees it or what people are going to say. It does not matter. What matters is what is God saying? Is God okay with what I'm saying? Is this what God wants from me? We have to be responsible. We mustn't just believe everything that is told to us because that's something that they've been talking about for years. The hour has come. Even as godly couples to normalize seeking the face of God concerning things in our marriages. And not just accept whatever that is thrown at us. <clears throat> We're better than that. We're better than that. That thing that is sweet. My mother used to say something to me, you know, when I, when I started, you know, when I uh, became an adult and I started dating, right? <laughs> My mother used to say something. So that thing that is sweet. It can also be very bitter. If you cannot eat with food, if you cannot eat with a plate that you pull in, you shouldn't find pleasure in a place that you excrete waste. You shouldn't. But that's my own take, though. Like I said, seek God for yourself. Ask God. And let him reveal to you what it is that he wants to reveal to you. But I'm just here to encourage people the little way that I can. You know, and, 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 and fight to maintain a godly marriage. Marriage is not easy. <laughs> marriage is not easy. There are a lot of things as individuals. That will come to see in marriages. That might not sit right with us. But. If God says. This is this. That is what it is. Alright people. That's what I have for us today. So like I said. This is a topic that is very hard. So ask God. Seek God for yourself. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to you what he wants to reveal to you. This is just my own revelation that I'm telling my, the people of God. It doesn't mean that it is the right thing. That's why it's important to have your own relationship. It is very important. All right, guys? I love you, but God loves you so much more. We're all learning on this work with God. Nobody has it. Nobody, nobody has got it all. We're all learning. And the best way to learn is by the Spirit of God. All right? We need to normalize not doing stuff because people are doing. That thing has killed a lot of people. That thing has destroyed a lot of people. Because everybody's doing it, I must do it. Uh -uh. Some of us our covenant with God is different. Some people, it's just the way that it is. 
What Mr. A will get away with you when you go, you will be held down. Because we all have our covenants with God. What people will get away with you, you will not be able to get away with. That is why you need to seek God every step of the way concerning certain things. All right, people? That's all I have for us today. So, Father, we thank you. Lord, we exalt you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise for who you are, Ishan of Bay. You would never lead us astray. You are a good God, a faithful Father. And we love you, God. And we say thank you for your word today. And Father, I ask, oh God, that with any married couple that are in this situation, that don't know which way to go, Father, I ask, oh God, that you reveal to them your mind concerning the situations that they are asking you, oh God. Holy Spirit of God, continue to teach us, guide us, and lead us into all truths. Continue to open our eyes to see that which we could not see. Lord, I thank you for every home, for every marriage, oh God. Let your hand continually rest upon them. The ones that are struggling, the ones that are on the verge of divorce, the ones that are happy, every home, oh God. May they experience you like they've never experienced you before, Father. May your face shine upon them. We we'll come against every plan of the enemy. Every plan of the enemy, oh God, will come against it right now in the name that is above every other name. In the name of Yeshua, Amashia. That the enemy's plan will not prevail but it will fall to the ground. And only your will, O oh God, will be done in every marriage. In the name of your Son, Yeshua, we have prayed. Thank you, dear God, for loving us so. Continue to have your way in our life. Continue to do that which only you, Jehovah, can do. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua's name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For the boldness to speak the truth. Thank you, dear God. In Yeshua's name we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, God. So, if you're married and you're going through any situation, you can contact us. We'll stand in the gap with you. We'll stand in agreement with you. We will pray with you and we will help whichever way that we can. We all know that marriage is not easy. And some of us got into marriage without having any experience. Some of us got into marriage because we had a particular way that we thought that it's going to be. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to die in silence. Whatever it is that you want to talk about. If, we, if we're not able to help you, we'll pray and let the Holy Spirit, you know, do what he does to give you the right answer. But we're here to encourage you, you know, be there for you, pray with you the best way that we can. All right, guys? Marriage is a beautiful thing. It doesn't matter what the world, how the world has made it seem. That's the plan of the enemy. 
to make the things that God has created like they are not good. But God said he created them because he knows that it is good. So marriage is a beautiful thing. No matter the experience that you are having, marriage is a good thing. And God is still in the business of restoration. God is still in the business of, you know, making it fruitful. God is still in the business of, you know, making it be the way that he wants it to be. He's ever ready. He's only waiting for us to take that step of faith. To lift it up to him and say, God, I hand it over to you. Because I have done everything I can do as a human. I don't know what else to do. And once you let God step in, you understand why the enemy has been fighting to get you out of there. Alright guys? So thank you for joining us. God bless you. I hope to see you guys next week, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Make it a date. I'm sure the Holy Spirit will have something interesting for us to talk about. Okay? So don't let anybody force you into something that you don't want to do. If your spirit is not okay with it, if you've prayed about it and God has said this is that, that is that. All right? Enjoy the rest of your week. God bless you.